In 2024, there were four powered steam freighters remaining on the lakes. The Alpina, Arthur M. Anderson, Wilford Sykes, and Philip R. Clark. We're going to have a look at each of them, starting with the Anderson. Arthur M. Anderson and Philip R. Clark are sister ships, both built in Lorain, Ohio, by the American Shipbuilding Company. The Clark came first in 1951, followed by the Anderson in 1952. Currently, they both sail as part of the Great Lakes fleet. The Anderson is the more storied of the two, having ties to the famous Edmund Fitzgerald. Powering these freighters are boilers and steam turbines instead of diesel engines. It's always nice to see friendly crew on the freighters. This footage is from May 2024. In a steam plant, water is preheated and dissolved gases are driven out in a de-aerator. This water is then fed into the twin water tube boilers, where fuel oil is burnt to evaporate the water into steam. That steam is then sent to the turbine, first into the high pressure section, then into the low pressure section. The steam spins the turbine, and the turbine spins the propeller through a reduction gear. The Philip R. Clark, seen here on a chilly November day, is about to receive supplies from the Ojibwe supply ship, just after coming through the Sulox. Flying a pirate flag, the similarities with the Anderson are obvious. She's got a badge reminding us she's over 70 years old. The Ojibwe is often seen buddying up with freighters, and it's a very cool sight to see all the crew work together on deck. The only obvious exterior sign that you're looking at a steamship is the plume of white steam venting from the de-aerator. It uses some steam from the boilers to raise the temperature of the incoming water, which drives off dissolved gases, in particular oxygen and carbon dioxide, which can damage boilers. I'll hand you over to Jason to briefly show you some of the equipment on his detailed ship model of the Edmund Fitzgerald, which would be similar to these ships. Jason the Adventure Man, and I am doing a project for the 50th anniversary of the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Here are my cardboard models, which actually float. This is the lower part on the on my cardboard engine room model for the Edmund Fitzgerald. You can see the circulating pumps and condenser. This is inside the middle engine room, and this is the boiler room. There is the steam turbine and the control module. And there are the circuit breaker panels over there. There are the steam turbine generators. These are the feed water pumps. Both of these ships are currently in layup and not sailing the 2025 season. We all hope to see them return to service soon. Still sailing in 2025, we have the Alpina and Wilfred Sykes. The Sykes was launched in 1949 and was also built in Lorain, Ohio. She was the first lake freighter built after World War II and brought some major improvements. At her launch, she was the widest and longest ship ever on the Great Lakes and was also the first to haul over 20,000 tons of cargo in one trip. Also the first freighter with interior tunnels and stairs, meaning crew could traverse between the bow and stern sections without being exposed on deck. She stole the show at the Sioux Locks Engineer Day in 2024, but she came downbound and locked through the MacArthur. Again, here you can see her de-aerator blue. One of the engineers running the steam plant briefly pops out too. been incredibly well maintained and has unique curvy shape that makes her a favorite among boat watchers. The Alpina is the oldest freighter still sailing on the lakes. Launched in 1942, making her 83 years old this year. Her four sister ships were all scrapped in the late 80s. She's the only freighter still to have terrain boxes, which collect air from the forward movement and push it below decks instead of the modern electric fans. She's 
part of a double A class vessel, predating the Anderson and Clark, which are triple A's. I believe her original boilers still burn coal instead of the others, which burn fuel oil, and she's full steam ahead. Now a cement carrier, I think she's the only ship to have been shored about 120 feet, while the other AAA boats were both flanked by the same amount. The Alpina is truly an icon of the lakes, and hopefully we see her continue to sail for years to come.